today I want to talk about ram pump placement you know where, where do you want to set up your ram pump in your creek this is the same vertical type uh, ram pump that you saw me field test in my backyard in a previous video it's the same ram pump the same pressure tank with the inner tube in it and 20 feet of drive pipe three quarter inch drive pipe let me take you up to uh, to where I tie into the to the creek and show you how I have that set up. What you're looking at here is the very beginning of my creek. There are several tributaries that come into it. Uh, we're about a half mile down there, I would guess. But this is where it all starts right here. This is a huge boulder that actually has water coming out of it actually coming out of the rock and that tells me that uh, you know there, there's water that goes deep into the ground at least at least to here so this big rock is acting as a, uh, a natural dam and that little pool you see right there uh, a lot of times it won't be nearly that big but we just had a couple of days of rain so this rock acts like a, a dam to create a spring. There's water that comes up through the ground right here. It comes up to the surface because this rock is acting as a dam. That's my drive pipe, my ram pump. 20 foot of drive pipe, three quarter inch. I have a couple of sandbags on it just to keep it from, uh, from wiggling around. And I've got that connected to about 10 feet of 2 inch pipe that connects to another section of 2 inch pipe with a T. And the reason I did that was because uh, I couldn't bend that 2 inch pipe around, around these rocks. I had to run it in a straight line. And by using a T, that just prevents it from being pushed, you know, out of position. I've got a an old brake shoe. I mean the brake assembly here I'm using to help hold it down. And I've got the front of a of a death stand to help take care of some of this debris. And let me get a little closer here I'll show you how how I have my actual intake. Right here at the actual intake, I've got sort of like a, a Y splitter, and then I have some of these, I don't know what you call these little filters, but they'd be for like a uh, uh, an intake pump, you know, on a pool or something like that. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them anywhere from one inch to two inches. This is a two inch size, and uh, it helps also filter out some of the trash but as you can see you know occasionally I expect I'll have to come up here and rinse some of the twigs off I didn't bring a brush with me today I could very easily just brought a brush to, to help clean this out or possibly just unscrew it show you what I'm talking about these things are pretty handy Clean it out. As you can see, I took a pair of pliers and cut the holes a little bigger in there. That way I don't have to come down and tend to it as often. But so far, so good with this thing. Let me put it back on. And anyhow, I think you get the picture there. So on your intake, you're going to have to do some kind of maintenance. And this seems to work pretty good for me. Just two of those little screen filters and then the front of a whole fan. And that, that helps take any leaves and just sort of wash them over the whole intake. All right. An important reason why I chose this as the uh, placement site from a round pump is because 
at least here I can get two and a half, close to three feet of, of head. You know, that, that drop there is very similar to what I was experimenting with on my, on my back deck in the previous video. Uh, that's about the only place this side of the highway I can do that because this creek is shallow and it, it drops less than a foot every every hundred feet. It's more like maybe eight inches every hundred feet. And so I just didn't really have any other place to put it uh, without trying to have, you know, three or four hundred feet of supply line. And you can see how this creek twists and turns like a snake. For my delivery line, I just got some three-quarter inch uh, regular garden hose. I mean, it's heavy-duty garden hose, but what I like about it is that it's flexible. It can go around these snaky turns. And, you know, about every 50, 75 feet, I've just laid a sandbag on it. There's plenty of sand around here, and that helps keep it from uh, washing away. Just think of how much it would cost you to run a supply line through here with all the, the angles and everything that you'd have to put up with. I, I, I bought this, this hose for less than $30 for a 100 feet section. And I've got close to 400 feet of hose just running through the creek. All right, I'm not gonna take you all the way down this creek. I'll be back in about 300 feet and show you the rest of it. One reason why I, I came up the creek this morning was because I, I don't feel like my pool is filling up as fast as it has been. And I wanted to see if maybe the intake had gotten clogged up. But on my way up the creek, this is what I discovered. This huge section of a tree had come down in the last storm and I've moved it. But when I first got down here, this thing was actually standing straight up on top of the hose there. So I'm sure it had it pinched. Now, I don't have any tools with me. I don't have my PV or anything. So this is the best I can do with it right now. But I do have my, my hose to where it's not being pinched by that log right now. If this had been something other than garden hose, if this had been, say, one and a half, two inch uh, supply, pipe PVC there's no doubt it would have been crushed that thing's heavy it, it's hundreds of pounds heavy it, it would have smushed a PVC pipe okay we've already gone past the 300 feet of that uh, white garden hose three-quarter inch garden hose and now here's another hundred feet of five-eighths inch garden hose that I just had this is how I get in and out of the creek. And so that's 400, probably five hundred. It's close to five hundred feet from my source down to here. We're gonna call this the junction. So I've got garden hose, <coughs> excuse me, I've got garden hose snaking its way through this creek uh, probably close to 500 feet from the ram pump and from this point up <coughs> i did use pvc pipe you'll be able to see the reason uh, in a future clip here but i did use pvc pipe to run up an irrigation ditch towards my house the irrigation ditch does not have much elevation to it so when I first hooked it up, I had a very difficult time getting the pump to stay cycled because it just didn't have enough back pressure. Let me tell you what I had to do. Well, you can see another tree has fallen into the creek on top of my hose. But uh, if I was to go down probably about another 30 or 40 feet, I went out of the creek, up the hill, and up a tree with a hundred foot hose 
and when I turn my ram pump on, I got it started by pumping out of that hose up in the tree. And once I knew I had good back pressure on it, I had a, a little hose splitter up here, you know, one of those Y things like you can get at Walmart or anywhere. And I ran another hose back. See this black hose here? This is my delivery line that goes down there to the Y. One end of the Y goes up the hill, up a tree to provide back pressure. And the other hose, this dark green one, is attached to that Y and comes back up here and connects to my PVC pipe, which is going up to my reservoir. Let's go up there and take a look at that. All right, this is that irrigation ditch with the PVC delivery pipe in it. Right around that corner there is where we were down in the creek. You know, I had my Y splitter. One is going up a hose over here in the woods up a tree, and the other one comes and connects to this PVC pipe. Now this is about 350 feet up this irrigation ditch to my pools. Go up there and look at that. PVC delivery pipe in this shallow irrigation ditch that doesn't have much elevation. Comes all the way up here. I have to go underneath the road right here. Delivery pipe comes out. Comes up to right here. And I've got two pools because when it's operating properly, I, I, I can fill one of these pools up in uh, less, than, less than two days. I'm getting about 20 gallons an hour. When I did my test, I was getting 30 gallons an hour, but uh, I'm running hundreds and hundreds of feet from the source, so it's not bad. Okay, now we've got the water coming from the ram pump down a very long but very inexpensive delivery system, just garden hose. And uh, I had some three quarter inch PVC delivery pipe left over from, well, recovered from last year's ram pump experiment when I had it uh, farther downstream and running up the highway there. But anyhow, to, to get the uh, water out of your reservoir, this is something I bought. Coing, can't say it, but it's a 1.6 horsepower or 1.8 horsepower, I'm not sure. But it's a pretty powerful transfer pump and it was less than $100. And it has a suction line that comes with it, about 20 feet of line. And I've got a brick tied to it so it doesn't float up. And I just pump out of one pool. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> And when the pool gets so low that I'm sucking air, I just take the, uh, the transfer pump intake and toss it over into the other pool. I got plenty of, of uh, hose for that. I've modified my transfer pump by putting a T on it. And from here, I can irrigate. I've got one of those little Y splitters right there. <coughs> I'm so sorry. So I can attach two hoses at the same time and pretty much irrigate anything I want. If I got in a hurry, at the end of one of these hoses, I could put another Y splitter and, you know, in other words, I could keep doing that until I just finally didn't have enough pressure to, to run six or seven sprinklers. But I got more than enough to run four sprinklers. This other side comes out and goes back under the culvert because we're going back across the road where my supply pipe came in. Coming down a little ways. <coughs> and so here we have another outlet when I'm running that transfer pump. If, if we wanted to get water on this side of the road, uh, we're not running the hose across the top of the, of the pavement there. We're just going underneath that culvert. Here are a couple of splitters. A uh, little short hose here so that if you need to wash off the vehicle or the berries or something, you know, this is a good place to do it. And have another hose that runs down here a ways to the center of the bean field. And I've, I've got a hose here. 
then when it's time to cut the grass every couple of weeks down here I can just uh, disconnect this this black hose and toss it in the ditch and then you know once once uh, the lawn tractor is finished in this area I can reconnect it and here another one of those Y splitters and I've got this hose running all the way to the other side of the field over to that line of blackberry. So as you can see, with that one little ram pump and two reservoirs, hopefully, and so far so good, well, we can keep everything irrigated. That side of the road, you know, we're irrigating the yard, the sod. Over here, it's mostly <clears throat> just irrigating the roots of these bushes. Blackberries and blueberries and stuff like that. Grapes. So I hope that gives you some ideas. Uh, if you're going to put a round pump in, you know, look for a place where you got some elevation or maybe enough straight creek where you can use a long supply line without having to do a whole lot of zigzagging. But uh, for me, the cheapest way was with that little round pump I showed you how I put mine together. Basically just two swing check valves put together with a nipple and then a pressure tank. But uh, I feel like this was the best choice for me. I had one area uh, in this half mile of creek where I could, I, I could actually get some kind of elevation, you know, two and a half, three feet ahead. And then just, what have we got? 400, there is over 700, over 700 feet of delivery pipe just to get to my reservoir. And I've got plenty of water coming out of it. i got more than I can use. So instead of thinking, hey, I need a long supply line, just get you a supply line short enough to where you, you know, you can have some elevation getting to your pump. And then the rest of it can be delivery line. I don't know how far you can go with delivery line. I heard you can go a mile or more with it. But for me, it was the easiest way. Good luck with your pump. I've had a lot of fun with mine.